This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. So Britney Spears is a free woman. We're very thankful to be able to say that after uh, quite some time. And I'm sure she's very thrilled to be saying that as well. Her and her fiance went out and she finally got to order a glass of champagne. She wasn't allowed to drink? She like wasn't able to be... She had no control over her money. She was like, I've never like seen my own cash, is what she said. Oh my goodness. I know. Uh, she wanted to take a minute to thank her fans, but also say it's time to move forward. Uh, here is part of that. My voice was muted. Your voice is muted because it sounds like you recorded this on a brick. <laughs> uh, but continue. <laughs> and threatened for so long and um, I wasn't able to speak up or say anything and um, because of you guys and the awareness of kind of knowing what was going on and delivering that news to the public for so long, you gave it awareness um, to all of them and um, because of you, I honestly think you guys saved my life. With that said, um, let's move forward. God bless you all. Awesome. Uh, what, was she driving a semi while she recorded it that? It does sound like it. <laughs> Like, is that now that she can choose what to do, she's decided to take up trucking? That reminds me of when we had like a full on, like our entire company had a Zoom call. Yeah. Or a Google Meet or whatever Mm. the heck it was. And I was the reason that the audio was getting screwed up. Like hundreds of people were on this call and I set my phone up against the window (laughs) on the seventh floor of our building and I guess it was a windy day so it was rattling and you had your mic on was on and it was supposed to be off and like I was getting messages from like our boss's boss being like are you blending a smoothie on the highway like (laughs) what are you doing and it was just like ding ding (laughs) ding because all the texts it was terrible it was terrible and and people are like you are the master of sound (laughs) like you that's what you do for work is is make things sound good you should maybe know this yeah uh same with Brittany, i guess like is she still on a nokia flip phone it seems to be that way yes um she did tweet out yesterday saying that she's going to set things square on oprah and she tagged oprah in the tweet so i don't know if that's actually happening i mm-hmm. hope it is oh my gosh oprah yeah would she would be- ask some heavy questions I wonder if Oprah knows about this, though. Like, I wonder if it's like Britney's like, now that I'm free, I'm deciding that I'm going to sit down with Oprah. Oprah gets this notification. She's like scrambling. She's like, wait, what? I mean, yeah. Start watering your rose garden, Oprah, because bring Britney in. Britney's coming in. Uh, Lady Gaga touched on it all now that Britney is free as well. I thought this was cool. I prayed for her this whole time, and I'm so happy for her. And I don't want to speak on behalf of her. I want everyone to know that, you know, we can all cheer her on, but really and truly, it's it's her that made this happen. That's her. She did that. Pretty awesome. Yeah, love it. Welcome to the free world, Britney. And if you're enjoying that, buying your own champagne, wait until you discover whiskey. <laughs> On Play 107. Just a heads up, you may get the crap scared out of you at some point this morning, but everything is okay. What do you mean? Well, likely. Uh, There's going to be one of those emergency alerts. Oh, they never reach out to me. They don't. They always forget about me. Yes, that is correct. They've ghosted you as well. (laughs) Yep. Uh, But we'll see. A lot of pain in that love. Maybe today's the day. What happened to that one guy that ghosted you? I think you wrote a song for him. Why are you asking me this right now? Well, we're going to get back to the emergency alert, but I just... You know what happened. What? You I know. forget. Can, refresh my memory. Uh, I was dating this guy, kind of, and we were texting back and forth, and then I wrote him a song and sent it to him because mm-hmm. I was feeling vulnerable, and I was like, hey, I'm like really good at singing uh, this song. So maybe he'll be impressed. And then, yeah, he goes to me and moved to Manitoba. Right. That was it. During the Fort Mac fires. And he was a firefighter. Yeah. So like he could have found work here, but no, I pushed him out. (laughs) He left. So sorry. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that story. Thank you for asking me about it, Ryder. I appreciate it. It's one of my favorite stories. Uh, yes, there is an emergency alert that's going to be coming to most people's phones, not Lisa's, uh, but it is just a test. 
Okay. But I just think with everything going on in 2021, especially you look at the weather issues, right? Is that why they're doing it, though? No, I think they're just literally doing a test. But this feels like during the Fort Mac fires, if they would have had like a a fake, what are those called? When they like practice if there's a fire? Um, A fire drill. A fire drill. That's like having a fire drill in like a neighboring town to Fort Mac during the fires. I think that would be smart. No, because people would be like, oh my God, we have to leave. No, they're refreshing their memory on how to handle it if it actually happened there, though. You shouldn't be doing alerts when things are not going well, is all I'm saying. It's never been going well. Nothing is good. Why can't I get the emergency alerts? Or the guy (laughs) in Manitoba to text you back. What? Where did he go? The first story that's actually made me tear up in quite some time coming up for my Tell Me Something Good. Uh, But first, my story is pretty funny. (laughs) First, it starts off scary. There's a woman that fell down a mountain. (laughs) But she's okay. Okay, yeah, you're <laughs> laughing while you say that, which is really just odd. So she was on this rocky slope, and she starts tumbling down. And like her friend was at the bottom and got video and pictures of it, and it's really funny. And uh, not only was she okay, but her leggings were okay to the point where there was not a single rip in them. And she was so impressed that she posted a review on Amazon, being like, "These are the best leggings I've ever bought." Like I, they survived a mountain and uh, it spurred over 18,000 shoppers to mark her review as helpful on Amazon. Okay. And uh, the post that she has up on Twitter has over 400,000 likes. And like in response to it, there's other people that have bought these leggings that are now testing it out on hills and like rolling down. And stuff. Yes. We need so, to get some. Uh, yeah. So they're called Ray Pose leggings off of Amazon. <laughs> One girl's like, glad I bought five. The original uh, review to the woman that fell. Yeah. She's like, can I just say that I will be reordering them in every color? Here's a picture of me rolling and sliding down a mountain because <laughs> I was too scared to get up. My leggings did not rip, not even a little bit. And I got stuck on rocks and trees on the way down. Amazing. Yeah. Tell me something good. My story is about a 12-year-old, Abraham, who uh, had a, has a rare blood disease that he was born with that might prove fatal. Uh, fast forward a year and one successful transplant, and the hospital said his prognosis is very promising. So okay. that's where we'll start. Uh, that's not the only good news, though. So... Over the course of his illness, Abraham learned that he qualified to be a recipient for Make a Wish. Mm-hmm. And they asked him what he wanted to do. Like, go to Disneyland is probably one of the most popular options. Oh, for sure. Sports games, like going and, you know, throwing the first pitch, stuff like that, is often picked. Uh, PlayStation, like gifts like that. No, he decided he was going to feed the homeless in his town once a month for a year. That's what he asked for, for his Make-A-Wish. So he sets up Abraham's table and goes out and volunteers. And the Make-A-Wish Foundation pays for the meals. And he feeds all of the homeless people. How old is Abraham? Sorry, 12. Oh, my gosh. The picture of him. I just want to show you because I know you'll probably react to. Oh, look. Of just like. They're all like pre-made and packaged. I love him. Yeah, me too. He's even got his uh, mask. He's double masked up. Yeah, taking care of the people in his community. Oh, my gosh. Just an awesome story. Yeah. Tell me something So yesterday with the massive snowfall, a lot of vehicles were getting stuck. I didn't think I would have to be one of those people that pushes a car out, but I I stepped up. And you're blaming what happened next on toxic masculinity. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, explain. So... There was a vehicle that was stuck in the parking lot. I uh, I stopped in at the dollar store because there was someone at my gym that mentioned that they were selling those um, slip-ons that you put on the bottom of your runners that have spikes on them. Okay. And I really want to try those out. So I went to the dollar store. They weren't. They were out, which is sad. So they must be a popular item. If anyone knows where I can get those, that'd be amazing. Could you just buy some soccer cleats? Oh. Uh, no. Okay. Um, anyway, so I was pulling out and luckily I have my winter tires on, on the SUV on my Tucson. And I saw this car that was spinning out. The front tires were spinning out. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've never done this before. And this was right after the (laughs) the gym, right? So you like your muscles were firing. Heck yeah, they were. But I was wearing, uh, runners that 
were just terrible for the conditions of this parking lot that hadn't been paved yet. And I was like, oh, my God, I've never been like the person to push out a car before. Today's the day. I'm going to do it. So Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I kept my SUV running and I wasn't in a parking spot. I was in like the middle of the parking lot like in the way of people that were probably trying to get out of their stalls, but whatever. I had to help this guy. So I'm pushing and we're trying to go forward and it's not helping. So I got to the front of the vehicle and I was like, you're going to have to reverse. Like we got to reverse your car. I'll push you backwards. And so I did and I got him out. But the only way that he could successfully drive off was if I moved my vehicle. I had to like back up into a parking stall so he could just drive forward. So I get back in my car quickly and I reverse and I get into a parking spot and he drives off. He didn't look at me. He didn't acknowledge me at all. Really? I've been helping him for like 10 minutes straight outside. I was like, oh my gosh. Like he didn't even he didn't courtesy even, wave? Nothing. He didn't even look at me. He just drove away in his little car. And I was like, you're just mad at me because I have my winter tires on on my SUV. Yeah, and you're in a little like, car, bro. <laughs> not that that's like a better thing, but in my mind, that's where I went. I was like, he's just mad that I'm a woman and I helped him. He didn't even say thank you or yeah, acknowledge like, me. Do you think he was embarrassed? Yes, I think he was embarrassed. And then he like... He completely like acted like nothing had happened and he just drove. After I had been like coaching him and telling him, no, you got to back up, you got to reverse. Right. The person who saved him, being like a good-looking blonde, wasn't maybe not what he expected to come good, up in his cards no, that day. No, it's not even like a good-looking blonde. It's I was a woman. Like that's right. it. That's the end of the definition. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Oh my god!" And I never say that. I always say, "Gosh!" But in that moment, I was like, <laughs> "Really?" Did you like? Oh. Did you react? Did you give it, him the finger? Or? No, it was too late. He had he because you know when you get um released from when you're stuck yeah. and you just want to go. Yeah, because yeah, you don't yeah. want to risk getting stuck again. So maybe that's what happened. But like, he drove right in front of my car. We could have made perfect eye contact. Yeah. And he didn't even yeah, yeah. look at me. I I'm not going to so defend mad. the guy because that sucks. I I get oddly angry when I don't get courtesy waves, when I let I somebody in or... It should be in school. Like when you're taking yeah, yeah. driving school, that should be the number one rule. Well, instead of like algebra... Let's just have a full Trigonometry. class. Trigonometry. We yeah. don't need that. Let's have a full class on <laughs> courtesy waves. Yeah, that guy sucks. I'd be grumpy. And my feet were wet. I was like, never doing that again. So sorry to everyone else out there. <laughs> Spend for yourselves. Don't get stuck. <laughs> now, normally, if anybody's fighting with somebody on the text line, it's me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a little fired up today? or Not really. A little I, on edge? I think I'm just being a brat. So Okay. Um, we had a text into our show of someone that didn't agree with something I said on air this morning Mm -hmm. and that's fine. Like people are allowed to have those opinions, right? Totally. Um, but then I just responded being defensive Mm -hmm. and so we, we kind of got into a a fight. It got a little out of hand. (laughs) I think we need to call this person. I Uh, doubt that they'll answer, but if not, we'll, uh, we'll leave a message. Okay. Sure. You have reached the voicemail box of... To leave a message, wait for the tone. Hey, Andrew, it's Ryder calling. Um, I know that you and Lisa have been kind of fighting. And by kind of fight, I mean like really going at each other on the text line. Uh, she just wanted to say something, so I have her here with me. Uh, uh, hi, Andrew. I forgive you. No, oh, right. he didn't apologize. I know. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to say I'm sorry for saying I forgive you, even though you didn't apologize. <laughs> uh, but what do you think of that as a response? Like, did it fire you up? Because I think I'm going to start using that on a regular basis with people. Yeah, no, no. Okay. This sorry. is supposed to be an apology. Uh, Andrew, we appreciate you listening to our show, and I would like to say sorry for being so fiery this morning. Uh, it's my cycle. I'd like to blame my cycle and the full moon. It is not actually me that is the problem. Okay, fine. It is me that is the problem. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, text us back when you get this. Yay. See ya, man. Hope everything's cool. Ryder's mad. He's like, how did I get rope into this? Yeah, like when you said <laughs> that you can't wait for the station to replace us both. And Ryder was fired I was, up. I was like, well, what did I do, man? <laughs> anyway, bye for now. Bye. <laughs> we are talking neighbor wars. I have a buddy, and I'm not saying that this was necessarily the right thing to do. We'll we'll get him to tell the story. (laughs) He'd like to remain anonymous, but uh, just check it out. Fire away, man. So I have this crazy neighbor. I live in an apartment building downtown, and 
she in the past like in the summer sometimes they've woken up at night with her outside yelling obscene things like over and over again like hello or mama Mama's got some milk for baby in her purse, like, all night long. <laughs> She's just trying to feed the cats. A couple weeks ago, she started, like, singing in her apartment, like, all day long. Mm-hmm. But, like, repeating the same songs over again, like, do re mi, do re mi, do re mi, for, like, hours on end. Or going, ooh, 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 ooh. Like, seriously, like, repeatedly for hours. And I work from home, so it's, like, really annoying. Yeah, that second and- one sounded like a bop, though. Yeah. <laughs> So the the landlord would call the police on her and the police would just be there pounding on her door for like 45 minutes an hour. And guess what? If you just don't open up, they can't do anything. It's not worth breaking down the door over. So um, I think the last day where it was really bad, it was for literally from 10 a.m. in the morning till 11 p.m. when I put my earplugs in. So I got pissed off. I went on to Amazon. I ordered this like fart spray. <laughs> <laughs> and, and last week um, she started singing again, and it was it was two in the afternoon this time. So I put on like a balaclava and like some ski goggles because I didn't want anyone to recognize me. And I I went to her floor, <laughs> and I snuck up and like sprayed, saturated, like sprayed under her door, sprayed her door handle and everything <laughs> with this fart spray. With this fart spray, and then I like ran back to my place, and <laughs> lo and behold, she stopped. Like after like ten minutes, she stopped. Yeah, and then and then like an hour later, she started up again. I went and sprayed her again. With the balaclava on, goggles on. Yeah, because I didn't want to get caught, so I, I totally Pavlovian dogged her. I just can't believe that you uh, said Pavlovian dogged her. Like, I haven't heard that meaning or term <laughs> ever. Uh, look look at a Pavlov's dog. It's like when you train a dog to salivate by ringing a bell because you keep bringing food and then ring a bell. It's like a automatic response. Right. So her automatic response to the singing farts. is there's going to be this fart smell and she doesn't like it, so she stops. Yeah, she's going to shut up and let me live my life in peace. <laughs> 107. All right, we're talking about neighbor wars. We're joined. Oh, we'll keep them anonymous. Yeah, we'll keep it just in case. You never know. All right. Uh, okay. But <laughs> you didn't shovel the one day. You're usually pretty good at like keeping the uh, walks and whatnot clear, and your neighbors complain to the city. To the city. So can you just take yeah. it from there? What did you do in response? Well, I got the warning, and then I was like, mm, I think there's a mistake here. Uh, the address is probably the wrong address. You should see the guys beside me. So they came by to look, and they're like, yeah, totally right, our mistake. And the warning got moved over to them due to the fact that I'd been glazing their driveway and sidewalk <laughs> with pots of hot water. like a- <laughs> <laughs> So you were pouring water onto their driveway to then make it very icy so that they would get the warning, not you. Yeah. That they is up and uh, they got uh, straightened out. <laughs> that is championship <laughs> yeah. neighbor war stuff. Well done, man. You got it. Tara said that she's got one brewing. Yeah. So she wrote in saying uh, our neighbor was so horrible. The slightest noise made him go off. My husband had to start his work truck in the winter on our driveway. So this must be like an old neighbor. Our neighbor back then literally went into his car and turned it off. Can you imagine if your neighbor was in your vehicle mm-hmm. turning it off in the mornings because it's just too loud for them? What what would you do? I would take a picture of them getting into the vehicle and then I would drive my truck out of town and stash it somewhere and report it stolen and send the pictures <laughs> of them getting into my vehicle to the police. That's what I would do. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, jail time. That's what you get for being such a jerk. I feel like I'm the jerk neighbor at this point because for my, sure. my car, whenever I try and start it in the winter, if I'm not in the vehicle within 15 minutes. I think it, it's 10. Maybe 10 minutes, yeah. yeah. It automatically turns off, which is fine. That's great. But for some reason, there's a setting on my vehicle right now that blows the loudest horn <laughs> to tell me that it's stopped running. And it wakes everyone up. Yeah. I'm certain it wakes people up at 430 in the morning. Yeah. So every morning, my day starts off with anxiety because I'm like trying to get to the car before the Right. You want to make blows. it like at the nine minute mark so that it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> every year, my neighbor decides that he needs to put his snow onto my lawn. So there's always big piles of his snow on my lawn. 
But what I do is I get my kids to go out there and make fourth in the snow. Yeah. And all the snow goes back onto his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you know your kids will be messy with their snow forts, eh? Exactly. Yeah, it gets all back on his driveway. He has to go back out there and shovel it again. Yeah, he can't get mad at kids. <laughs> no, exactly, right? What do you got? So, um, last winter, and I'm hoping it doesn't happen this winter, but uh, my uh, neighbors have a lovely habit of recording my own car parked in front of my own house. (laughs) And, um, I mean, last year it was difficult because it was COVID, right? Like, we weren't going anywhere, and it's the dead of winter. So, yeah, there might be, like, four days where I leave my car parked in front of my house. But then the real kicker was in December and January, I got really sick, um, and I ended up being hospitalized for three weeks in the ICU. Wow. And when I came back, my car was gone because they had reported it, and it got towed. And it was in front of my own house, and I was so frustrated. Oh, my goodness. I was like, you know, who has the time to sit outside their house? And, like, they must know I live there. Like, they <laughs> see me getting in and out of my car. Oh, my God. And I was like, what, like, what do you want me to do? And it was so awful. And so I get it back, and the battery's dead, and I'm fresh out of hospital, and it's minus 30, and it just, it was a whole thing. And I haven't taken any revenge because I don't know which neighbor it is, but I would love some feedback. If anyone has any brilliant ideas, I, you know, I'm not one to like to make a big fuss or be unkind, but I would at least slip a card in their mailbox that's like, hey, yeah. take it easy on me this winter. I just put one in everyone's mailbox. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, just right <laughs> like if you the- are the one who yeah. did this. <laughs> Please cut me a break. Yeah. That's Just exactly to let you do. know, I was in the ICU when you reported my car, and I don't know where else you'd like me to park it. Yeah, put that in their yeah. mailbox with, like, a box of cookies. Yeah, exactly. That's a nice way to do it. Yeah, yeah but put x lax in the cookies. x lax <laughs> <X-lax laughs> in the cookies. like a real jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.